So in this video, I'm gonna cover the making of a six foot by eight foot octagonal box blind. And this design is based almost entirely on a design from Brent Morovitz. I'll include a link in the doodly-doo to the, his videos on YouTube. Um, the window design, the basic design of the box blind are all really his. I made a few tweaks to some of the dimensions that Brent had to optimize material utilization. I'm also going to use a trapdoor style entry rather than a full rear door with a porch like he used. So if, if there are really good instructions out there from Brent, why am I bothering to make a video? Uh, mostly to provide you access to some of the information I have. I'm an engineer dork, so I'll have a full 3D CAD model, dimension drawings, a cut list via an Excel file that I can provide access to. If you're interested, you can reach out to me for that. So we'll get started and let's see how this goes. The floor deck is framed with untreated two by six lumber and it's nominally a six foot by eight foot floor plan. I use three quarter inch CDX plywood for the floor deck cutting off the corners to accommodate the corner windows of the octagon blind. I'm not going to include a lot of detail about the construction process. You can get the plans from the link in the video description and also refer to Brett Moravitz's videos for more detail. This video will just give you an overview of the construction process I used. You definitely want a quiet floor in the deer blind so the plywood is glued with construction adhesive and screwed to the 2x6 floor deck to prevent squeaking. To keep it somewhat light to make it easy to lift, the trap door is framed out with 2x2s which are glued and screwed to the plywood and attached to the floor deck with heavy duty door hinges. The side panels are constructed from untreated 7 16 inch thick CDX plywood. I marked out all the windows following the dimensions provided in Brett Moravitz's video and cut them out using a circular saw. On inside cuts, I very carefully plunge cut, pivoting on the front edge of the saw as I drop the blade through the plywood. Then clean up the corners using a jigsaw. Since my blind is a bit wider than Brett's, I included two windows on the front and back walls. The octagonal shape of the blind means that you have inside corners that are 135 degrees. To create the corner posts, I ripped 2x4s with the table saw blade set at an angle of 22.5 degrees. You then flip one side end for end to form that angled corner post. Those I assembled with glue and screws with clamps to hold it together while the glue dries. Once that glue dried on the corner posts, I attached them to the side panels. I then framed out the windows using 2x2s. Actually, to save a little bit of cost, these were 2x4s that I ripped in half on the table saw. I tacked those in place temporarily with brad nails, then stand the panels up and use pan head screws to attach the plywood to the 2x4s. Here I'm using a jigsaw to notch the front and back panels for the 2x4 rafters that will be installed later. So, while I'm framing up the side window, I'll tell you a little story. Yesterday we were walking our nine-month-old yellow lab, still a puppy obviously, in the local, it's called a farm preserve, it's owned by our township and they rent out the farmland, but the residents can go for nice nature walks. It's got, I don't know, it's a couple hundred acres, I think, right near here. Anyway, my wife and I were walking along the fence line with the dog, and about 50 feet in front of us, maybe 100 feet, nice little buck, eight point, jumped up in front of us. Obviously the dog got excited, and the buck got excited and ran about 100 yards down the fence line on the path in front of us, and then proceeded to try to run through the fence line, and somehow got tangled up in the fence, injured his back, and his back legs weren't working anymore. And so, since it's run by the township, we called the local sheriff's department, and the sheriff's deputy came out, put the end of a lot of his misery for us. I would've been happy to do it myself, obviously, but we don't want you to do that sort of thing outside the hunting season, so the deputy let, let us have the deer. So, spent most of yesterday cleaning this fellow, who is now in my freezer out in the barn. 
And so the moral of the story is I feel a little bit strange going to all this trouble to build a fancy deer blind when I can just go for a walk in a local farm preserve and the deer will just commit suicide for me. Crazy thing. Once in a lifetime event. Anyway, we're happy for the extra meat and hopefully we have as good a luck with this blind as we did on the day I intended to be working on making this blind, but instead spent butchering a deer. Anyway, these window trim on the corners are pretty simple. Simple little frame. These will fit between those angled corner posts, which will fit right here. Everything will get fastened together when we put it up. These little brads are just to hold it in place temporarily. the glue since they're fairly lightly built panels and then some screws in the 2x4 through the sheathing just like you did on all the other panels you can see them over there behind me coming back to the floor deck I installed a recessed ring pull for the trap door that was inset into the plywood using a straight bit in my trim router. At this point, I took the floor deck and all of the wall panels outside and gave everything a couple of coats of cheap black barn paint using an airless paint sprayer. I was quite happy with the Graco Magnum X5 sprayer I bought for the task. I have a separate video review of that sprayer. I'll include a link to that in the video description. The 4x4 legs will attach to the floor deck using these metal brackets I bought from Amazon. The brackets are through bolted to the 2x6s in the floor deck. For any project like this, I tend to keep a master shopping list in spreadsheet form with links to all the products I used. I'll share that spreadsheet via a Google Drive link in the video description. Links and prices were accurate as of August in 2022. One element of Brett Morovitz's deer blind design that I quite liked was his windows. He has a detailed video on how to make these, so I'll include a link to that in my video description here. The windows are made from quarter inch thick plexiglass, hinged on one edge and sealed using garage door seal. They're reasonably cheap, easy to make, and so far seem to work quite well. There are three elements to Brett's window design that I don't think I ever would have thought of on my own. One is attaching the hinges to the plexiglass using simple pop rivets. The second is sealing the windows using this simple garage door trim. I cut the trim to length on a chop saw, then cut about half an inch off the trim using a utility knife. The trim gets pushed up against the outside of the windows and attached using pan head screws. And third is creating these simple window locks using short sections of PVC pipe. These are cheap, easy to make, and quiet in operation. So Brett, if you ever stumble across this video, thanks for each of these small strokes of brilliance. To help deaden sound, I installed a carpet on the floor of the blind. I found an area rug for free on Facebook Marketplace, and when cut up, it provided enough to cover the floor as well as the lower side walls where you might bump the wall with your boot while in the blind. To cut down on humidity in the blind, I cut a small vent and installed a vent cover on each of the side panels. One roof rafter was attached to each of these side walls. The last step done at home was to cut notches in the side rails of the ladder to support the ladder rungs. Then all of the parts got loaded onto the trailer for the trip to Pennsylvania. We installed some short temporary legs and leveled the base before erecting the blind on site. With the modular panels, things went together pretty quickly. After getting up the walls, we installed the remaining rafters 
added OSB panels for the roof sheathing, and then the roof was finished with some drip edge and shingles. Fortunately, my friend has a nice tracked skid steer with forks, so we're able to build the blind on the ground and then transport it up the hill with the skid steer. At the site, we dug down on the uphill side to create four pads at the same level for the base of the legs. And with the light fading on the day, we lifted the blind up onto the four by four legs, which just sat on stone pavers at the base. I'm not gonna lie, lifting it up and getting it on the four legs was a bit sketchy. I felt a lot better about things after we got some braces installed just before calling it a night. The next morning, we finished getting the stand reinforced. We installed some screw-in ground anchors. That looks like work. It is work. <laughs> and used those to brace the stand using cables on all four sides. We also installed through bolts, firmly connecting the braces to the legs. Finally, we put up the ladder. And if the GoPro mic will pick up that I just farted. <laughs> So I'll conclude with some final shots of the 360 degree views from the blind while I share some closing thoughts. Overall, I'm quite happy with it. It's certainly more comfortable than the ground blinds we've been using, and we did manage to take one deer from it in the first year. I originally decided to build a 6x8 blind to allow it to accommodate two hunters, but in practice we found that we tended to go off on our own and hunt solo in either this blind or other blinds. So I think that if I build another blind, I'll go a little bit smaller. I like the octagon design, but I think maybe 5x5 five five is a decent size for a solo hunter. Also, I set the window height based on Brett Moravitz's design, and I found that for me, I'm 6 foot 4 inches tall, the windows on the uphill side were a little on the low side. I found myself ducking down to look up the hill behind the blind, so I may come back as a retrofit and shift those back windows up a couple of inches next year. Otherwise, if you're interested in the details of this design, check out the links in the video description, and thanks for watching.